Good morning and welcome to Breakfast with Dan Walker and Louise Minchin. Headlines for you at six o'clock this morning. A country struggling to breathe. India registers a record-breaking number of new coronavirus cases for a fifth day in a row. Questions grow for the Prime Minister about the refurbishment of his Downing Street flat as Labour demands a formal inquiry. A very good morning from the England-Scotland border, open for non-essential travel for the first time since Christmas. What does it mean for hotels, hospitality and those hoping to get hitched here in Gretna? Manchester City win the League Cup for a fourth year in a row and it all happened in front of 8,000 spectators at Wembley. The sport gradually welcomes the fans back. It was a good night for the Brits at the Oscars as Sir Anthony Hopkins and Daniel Kaluuya take home big prizes. We've got to celebrate life, man. We're breathing, we're walking, it's incredible. It's incredible. Like, it's incredible. My mum met my dad, they had sex. It's amazing. Like, do you understand? I'm here. But Nomad Land scoops best picture, best director, and best actress for Frances McDormand. Good morning. The weather this week's turning more unsettled, with eventually all of us seeing some rain. Today, the rain's in the northern half of the country, drier and brighter in the southern half. I'll have all the details in about 10 minutes or so. Good morning, it's Monday, it's the 26th of April. Top story for you this morning is that India has recorded another global record of new coronavirus cases for a fifth day running, with more than 352,000 infections reported in the last 24 hours. Hospitals in Delhi have completely run out of beds and some are missing critical supplies, including oxygen. The UK, along with others, is now sending medical aid to the country. Our India correspondent Yogita Limai reports. The capital is being ravaged at a frightening speed. With every pyre that burns, India's self-belief is dying. Each funeral is a story of personal loss and national shame. Charanjeev Malhotra has been helping to cremate the dead for decades. Now, he barely ever stops working. I've never seen such a terrifying situation. I can't believe that we're in the capital of India. People aren't getting oxygen and they're dying like animals, he says. We don't even have enough resources to cremate them properly. Outside, Shivangi Mera is on the phone organizing oxygen for the hospital she works in. Nothing, nothing is being done. I don't know government is sleeping or what they are doing. I am totally disheartened in the situation which I am seeing. Government is a literal failure. A person cannot live stay here in Delhi. A person cannot even die peacefully in Delhi. She's waiting to cremate her grandfather, who died, she says, because there wasn't enough oxygen. This small hospital in North Delhi is facing a daily struggle. Ma'am, we have been spending sleepless nights since uh, last one week. I mean, we, at times we feel like crying because we are not able to help a patient properly. Every day, this is the, it's the same scenario. We are left only with two hours of oxygen, three hours of oxygen. That, uh, I mean, and uh, we are only getting assurance from the system, no oxygen. And so, families are being told to organize oxygen. At one medical shop, we found people with empty cylinders waiting to buy their own supply for loved ones who urgently need it. For many here, the government's promises of rushing in oxygen are coming too late. Families left asking why something so basic is unavailable. Every crematorium we've been to, we've seen body after body being brought in. It's hard for anyone to keep count, but what workers have been telling me is that the real scale of deaths caused by COVID-19 in India is a lot higher than what official numbers reflect. And a lot of those who've died right now have done so because they couldn't get oxygen in time. Jitender Singh Shanti runs a group of volunteers here. Even young people are dying. It's a very bad situation. If it keeps getting worse, we'll have to burn bodies by the side of the road, he says. There is a sense of abandonment in this country. Citizens are stepping up to do what a government should, left to fight a vicious pandemic on their own. 
योग तलमाए बी बी सी न्यूज डेली The UK's most senior civil servant will be questioned by MPs later on lobbying rules. Simon Case is also expected to be asked about allegations of impropriety made against the Prime Minister by his former adviser Dominic Cummings. Meanwhile, Labour has written to the Electoral Commission to demand a formal inquiry into the funding of refurbishments to Boris Johnson's Downing Street flat. Our political correspondent in Watson has this report. When Dominic Cummings left Downing Street last year, some in government worried about what secrets might emerge from that box. He's now claimed that Boris Johnson planned to ask Conservative donors to pay for the refurbishment of the Downing Street flat, and that this was unethical. Labour plans to keep up the pressure on Number Ten. Their lawyers have written to the party political watchdog, the Electoral Commission. They say, following Dominic Cummings' claims. It's now incontrovertibly in the public interest that the Electoral Commission commence a formal investigation. The Commission says it's still gathering information, and Downing Street says electoral laws haven't been broken and no codes of conduct have been breached. Labour is seeking to broaden their attack by demanding the publication of all contacts and links between ministers and firms given government contracts during the COVID crisis. The government said that while contracts had been awarded at speed. Due diligence was carried out, and ministers had no role in awarding them. And today, a committee of MPs will question the country's top civil servant about another of Dominic Cummings' allegations. Simon Case was due to talk about lobbying rules, but will now also be asked about the claim that the Prime Minister considered halting a leak inquiry in case it put a friend of his fiancée Carrie Simons in the frame. Downing Street has said that this is absolutely false. And now that he's out of Downing Street, Dominic Cummings seems keen for others to join him. Ian Watson, BBC News. Around half a million 44-year-olds in England will be invited to book their first dose of a coronavirus. Coronavirus vaccine from today. 40 to 43 year olds are expected to follow later this week. It comes as a new TV ad campaign is being launched to encourage all under 50s across the UK to say yes when they are offered a shot. It's important to remember that younger people are still at risk of getting COVID. Uh, they're still at risk of severe disease. Uh, and of course, we know there are other side effects such as long COVID uh, that uh, can be a consequence uh, of this uh, virus. So it's really crucial that everybody is vaccinated. When you get your text, make your booking, come forward, get the jab, protect yourself, protect others. Now, Scotland will see the biggest easing of restrictions today since it went into nationwide lockdown more than four months ago. Shops, bars and restaurants are reopening and people can travel across the border for non-essential travel. Our Scotland correspondent, Alexandra McKenzie, is at a pub outside Glasgow Forest this morning. It's a big day, isn't it? Morning. <laughs> Good morning. Yes, it is a very big day. There's quite a lot happening in Scotland today. Things are going to feel much more normal from today. Hospitality, like here, is going to open up and there will be some restrictions, but Scotland is the only place in the UK where you're going to be able to have a meal inside, but you can't have alcohol inside and closing will be early at 8pm. But if you want to have a drink or have a drink with your meal, you can come to a beer garden like this one. There will be one metre uh, social distancing. You can see the tables are quite spread out here. And you, everyone will have to give their contact details. And there's a new app that you can download onto your phone. It's called Check In Scotland. And you can meet in slightly larger groups from today. If you're outside, like here in the beer garden, you can meet with up to six people, and that's with up to six different households. If you are inside, you can still meet with up to six people, but that's going to be with only two households. And another big thing that's going to happen today, that's going to be retail is opening. So if you want to hit the shops, you can do that from today. Also, if you want to go to the gym, you can do that from today. And you can also go to the beauty parlour as well if you're needing anything done. So a lot of things happening from today here in Scotland. You're going to be uh, with us uh, throughout the morning. Alexandra, thank you very much. And hospitality venues in Wales can start serving people outside from this morning as well. Organised outdoor activities will also be allowed for up to 30 people. 
as well as outdoor wedding receptions for the same number. The former chief executive of the post office has said she is truly sorry for the suffering caused to sub-postmasters who were wrongly convicted of criminal offences. Reverend Paula Venels issued the apology as she announced she would be stepping back from her public roles as well as her regular church duties in the wake of the scandal. On Friday, judges quashed the convictions of 39 former sub-postmasters who, due to an IT flaw, had wrongfully been found guilty of theft and fraud. Ten fire engines are dealing with a huge blaze on Marsden Moor near Huddersfield in West Yorkshire. Uh, the flames uh, cover an area equivalent to five football pitches. Two specialist wildfire units have also been sent to the scene there. This comes about two years to the day since the devastating fire destroyed over 700 hectares of land in the same area. See the headlines as they happen and watch BBC News live in the app and get the full story with bbc.co.uk forward slash news. Follow the story for all the latest with BBC News.